Hi, I'm Lucy Edson. I'm here doing a video today for Crate Paper. I, um, I love to do home decor projects, and I did this piece using punches from various Crate Papers from the newest collections, and uh, used a stamp and outlined part of that over the top. I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do the collage paper technique. And this is onto a board, or you could use a canvas. And I'm going to walk you through step by step um, on my little sample piece that I did right here. So let's head into the studio and get started. For my sample um, that I'm going to be demonstrating this technique, I'm just using a piece of a, a wooden board. My husband has cut some of these for me. This is just from a 2x4. And I'll use these for little collage and art pieces. And uh, to prep this, I'm just going to put a paint, a paint coat of gesso onto it. Gesso, this is an acrylic gesso that it's just the kind of chalky white paint. You could use acrylic paint if you wanted. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is so whenever I start to glue the papers down, um, the glue just won't immediately be completely absorbed into the wood. Uh, I really like to use a wood base for this type of collage. You could also use a canvas. Um, but wood is just so sturdy and doesn't warp from any of the texture or the extra glue or wetness. So I'll just paint this. I'll paint all the sides of it and then set this out and let it dry. And while that's drying, I will, um, I've got my, my square punch here. This is an um, inch and a quarter. You can definitely use a smaller size if you're doing a small piece like this, or you can overlap them some. And I've just got some scrap paper. Um, from my just different pieces of crate paper that are scrap and since these are double sided papers you'll be able to use both sides and I'm simply going to just kind of start punching some squares out and I'm going to have a pile of squares that I'm going to use for my collage. I'm going to pull my sample out here to take a quick look at this and you can see where I've used all my little squares and I tried to work um, somewhat with a color scheme like I started here on the lighter side and did the lighter colors with the more of the gold and then kind of ranged into pinks and then greens and blues more. I tried to kind of, um, it's not exactly like a color match, but kind of blend the colors across. And then add a few little pops of a darker color for some contrast. And um, But that's how I worked on this background um, for the larger piece. So for the smaller one, it'll be a little different because I can't use quite as much of a variance of color. But um, here I am back with my little block, and this the paint is dry. This is a coat of gesso, and I've got all my little squares here, and they're cut, um, punched out with a square punch. If you wanted to work in a smaller scale on something this small, it would actually be better, but I'm just going to do this for the sample, so it'll be fine. Um, I am working with some Soft Gel Medium by Golden, and I always use an old brush for that because it's really hard to get that all out of your brush when you're finished. So I'm just going to kind of start just laying out a few pieces on here just to get an idea of where it's going. Um, I always like to kind of just get a slight basic layout. It doesn't have to stay exactly this way and if it gets mixed up it will be fine. start um, with the gel medium and I'll just brush some onto the wood and then place my piece of paper here and then just brush a light coat on the top. And as I put these on I'm not going to worry too much about making them straight. I do like to have the kind of um, edges not even and I'm gonna let them overlap and be a little skewed just to add some interest and it kind of depends on how they fit across also. Um, the gel medium will dry clear so um, this will be clear when you're all finished. Okay I've let my gel medium dry and you can see my papers are all collaged down and they've dried clear. Um, so now I could um, stamp into the top of this immediately as I've done under this. Um, but the first thing I did on this piece is I did a light wash across it to kind of blend the papers and give it more of a painted appearance. And uh, I did that by um, just going back to the gesso again. And first off just painting a really light coat of gesso over the entire piece. And now on this step, you can remove or leave on as much as you like. So I'm just going to take, um, this is a dry paper towel, and just kind of start wiping away part of the gesso. And it's just, just going to give a little bit of a chalky appearance and kind of soften up um, the colors. Now if you want a little less um, showing or a little more, you can dampen your towel and uh, one thing about having the gel medium is it provides um, a layer between the um, paper and the paint so that you can wet this down and it won't ruin the paper or peel it up. So that's really handy. 
and uh, you can just kind of lift as much as you want in certain areas, like if you want a certain color to show up a little more. Kind of like that. And um, I also lifted a, um, pulled a little bit of color, and that was just from some, from some yellow acrylic paint. Um, this is a golden, um, like a, a fluid acrylic, which is a sheer paint, but you could use... Um, any kind of acrylic paint. And you could put a little extender in it if it's too much. I'm just going to really lightly do that and then take my paper towel again and just start blending. It would be a baby wipe works really well too because then you kind of have some dampness to kind of keep working this. I got this a little bit wet to soften up the color. Yeah. The next step is to um, the stamping. Uh, for the large project, I used um, one of the big Prima Donna Downey stamps. Uh, the scale won't work for this. So I just have a foam stamp by plaid. Um, you wouldn't have to use a foam stamp. I like foam stamps for this type of thing because the scale is larger. There's not so much detail because this is not exactly flat because there are some rough edges where the paper has overlapped. And using a looser stamp like this that doesn't have as fine of detail is really a lot easier. I'm just using some black stays on ink. Um, I like stays on because it is permanent and it's not going to be going anywhere. It doesn't bleed out if I have to get it wet again. So I'm just going to ink up my stamp. This pad is not as wet as I would like it to be, so I'm going to just do the best I can. So I've inked it up my stamp and And let's see what we've got. Okay, great. I love the way that turned out. I actually even like the distressed appearance to it. If you don't want it to look quite as distressed and you'd like a more defined um, area, you could trace over this um, with a permanent pen. Um, I found this um, sticker word that was from the Brook Collection, and I just want to put it on here. Um, and to distress this a little bit, I'm going to um, just use a little bit of my gesso again. I still have my brush here. I'm just going to kind of blend this in a little bit, kind of shade it. And I'm going to put a thin coat of gel medium across the top just to seal that. Okay. And there's my block. Ready to be displayed or as a really cute little gift idea. I'm going to take some pictures, um, close up shots, and add to this video. Also, I'm going to add in some text onto this larger piece, which I haven't done yet.